The storm cloud passes over. Good evening, good evening. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us for another Walk in the Word Wednesday Bible study. We're so thankful to God to be back with you on this evening. We were away from you, not from service. Baptism was on last Wednesday, and we are resuming our study on this Wednesday. But we thank those of you who joined us, who tuned in on last Wednesday for the baptismal service, and those of you who have joined us for this evening's time as we walk in the word. Amen. Amen. We just certainly want to say welcome to each and every one of you who are joining us here in the sanctuary, who are joining us in person, 
those who are also joining us from your various locations all across Metro Atlanta, certainly to all of the members of our beloved Beulah family here in person and those who are viewing, but also to our new covenant members in other cities and other states and to our friends all across the nation and outside in other foreign countries. We praise God for you. We're just thankful to God for the wonderful blessing of the word of God and how we are blessed and favored with the word of God that provides guidance and direction for us. It helps us, it strengthens us, it encourages us, and we can go on and on and on about the importance of God's word. But we're just thankful to God that you have joined us on this evening and you still have time to go tell friends and neighbors and relatives that we're on and we would love to have you on board with us this evening. We, Sister Black, is a joy to be back in this place with you on this evening oh, as Pastor. we are joined by loved ones, amen, from Beulah yes. and visiting friends. Amen. It is a joy. We had a good time in baptism last <laughs> Wednesday. Yes, we did. Amen. And we are grateful for those of you who were with us uh, as we took souls to the water to be baptized. But guess what? We're in for another good time on this evening. Yes. Amen. And certainly to God be the glory yes. for the things he has done. We want to mention very quickly uh, that we encourage you uh, to have your Bibles because we will be making reference to various portions of Scripture on this evening, and we want you to be able to follow along uh, and read along with us uh, your Bibles or your various devices that where you're able to pull up the Scriptures and so forth. Uh, but also, we want you to know that your questions are valuable to us, questions that pertain to our series of studies on dealing with the enemy, mm -hmm. yes. dealing with the enemy. Amen. We know you have millions, many questions. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 But we're confining those questions to this subject area, dealing with the enemy. And certainly we encourage your questions. So if you have questions, please feel free to text in your questions. And Brother Curtis, amen. Uh, we'll be uh, keeping record of the questions that you may have uh, here uh, joining us in person, but also Sister Black will be keeping record of questions that are text in to her, and those questions will be shared with me as we go through this evening's study. Now, we're going to be dealing on this evening with a number of questions that are most commonly asked uh, by various individuals concerning dealing with the enemy and concerning uh, how best to deal with it. We're gonna be dealing with a number of those questions and areas of concern, and certainly we want you to express those questions and concerns uh, to us. Uh, also, we want to make mention of the fact uh, that we love to know where you are joining us from. <laughs> and so please feel free uh, to uh, let us know your locations. If you're viewing from other locations, we certainly want you to let us know because it enables us to realize that uh, our ministry is reaching Amen. your areas. Amen. 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 And Pastor. so we gladly receive information about where you are viewing from. So please join us in texting in uh, your areas and your locations from whence you are viewing. Brothers and sisters, let us go quickly to our Heavenly Father in a brief word of prayer. Father God, how grateful we are to be able, dear Father, to return to this house of worship, to be able, dear Father, to share with your people in person here in the sanctuary and those who are joining us virtually as this Bible study is being streamed all across the nation and beyond. Father, we thank you now 
for the fact that you have blessed us to see a brand new day. Uh, you have blessed us to make it to this point in this day. And we thank you, dear Father. Yes. We give you glory, honor, and praise for the most precious gift of all, your darling son, Jesus Christ. And dear Father, we thank you for the fact that he paid the price for our sins on Calvary, but we also thank you for the fact that early that following Sunday morning, he got up. And we thank you, dear Father, that we're able to celebrate his resurrection and the fact that he is alive right now. Father, we ask that you will join us in this study. We ask, dear Father, that you will use us as instruments and vessels that will be a source of blessings to your people, a source of encouragement, a source of inspiration, a source of strength. And dear Father, we pray that your people will be greatly edified and that you, Heavenly Father, will be greatly glorified. For we pray and ask it all now in Jesus' name. In Jesus and we name. say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And amen, 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 amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for joining us on this evening. And we have been dealing with some powerful, powerful, powerful subjects in dealing with the enemy. And of course, we have continued to uh, just reinforce the fact that the devil is real. To reinforce the fact, to emphasize the fact that we wrestle, as the Apostle Paul said, not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And Heavenly Father, we realize, my brothers and sisters, the fact that Satan is at work this very hour doing all that he can to create as much turmoil, as much confusion, as much strife, as much hatred as he possibly can. But yet those of us who are children of God can be victorious over the enemy. Amen. Now, I want to before we move into the area that we'll be dealing with on this evening uh, that deals with most common and most often questions that I ask about dealing with the enemy, just let me start by reading this, and that is, good for evil is to be our only weapon. Good for evil is to be our only weapon. And with this, we are to fight perpetually. Cost us what it may, the love of God falls on men who deserve it or who deserve it not. And so also must our kindness be toward those who are not kind to us. It would be far better uh, that a hundred evil persons deceived us and so obtained our aid and our kindness than that one suffering fellow creature should be neglected because of the wickedness of others. Therefore, it is so important that you and I realize that if we're going to be victorious over the enemy, regardless to whatever form or fashion the enemy may come, and certainly when the enemy comes in the form and fashion of people. It is so important that we realize this, and that is hardness of heart gradually grows upon men through contact with a deceitful and oppressive world. But we must not allow evil influences to master us and steal or harden our hearts against our fellow men and women. And of course here, when we're dealing with all kinds of circumstances and situations, and when we have experienced and been the victims of evil treatment from others, 
if we're not careful, our hearts can grow very hard. We can become very hard-hearted and very cold, especially toward those who have mistreated us, those who have wronged us, those who have said all kinds of evil things about us. We can become cold and hard-hearted towards them. But this is exactly what the devil wants. And so we don't want to fall guilty of that. Amen. As so many do. Amen. Let us be aware of the fact, amen, that one of the objectives of the devil is to bring us down from that high spiritual level that the Lord wants us to be on. Amen. And even when we have made it to a high spiritual level, he's doing all he can to bring us back down. Amen. To that lower level. Amen. Where we rob God of the glory and certainly the devil becomes greatly glorified. Amen. And so it's important that we don't allow hard-hearted, cold-hearted people to make us become hard-hearted and cold-hearted. Amen. Because this can cause us to fall critically short of that which moves and proves to be pleasing in the sight of the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. And so many times when you and I are tempted to go a certain direction, amen, let us go to God in prayer and seek his guidance if we don't already know by virtue of what his word tells us, amen. Seek the guidance of God so that he will guide us and tell us, amen. It's so important because I do not want to rob God of the glory. He's been too good to you and me. He's brought us too far for us, amen, to end up glorifying the devil, glorifying the enemy. Brothers and sisters, uh, to close out this section on identifying the enemy and doing battle with the enemy, we must know that this is the principal part of the battle with the enemy, and that is knowing who the enemy is and how to defeat them. Realize your position in Christ. Think of our true identity as enthroned with the Savior, as Scripture informs us in Ephesians 2 and 6 that we'll come back to in just a moment. In reality, you are looking down on the principalities and powers. Meditate on this truth and let the Lord's authority give you confidence. This is not positive thinking, but the potency of being identified with the risen Christ, with the risen Lord. Amen. So important that we realize that. And let's turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 6, if you will. And then we're going to get into these juicy, juicy questions that are commonly asked and commonly raised by men and women, boys and <laughs> girls, and possibly by many of us who are gathered in here right this evening. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians, as we have said in times past, was one of the epistles or letters written by the Apostle Paul. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 tells us in these words, uh, written in the King James Version of the Bible, it says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And of course, verse 5, which precedes that, tells us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
meaning we have been lifted above that low level of sinful activity, of sinful behavior, of sinful conduct, and we have been raised now to a high spiritual level. Amen. And now we're able to look down on the evil doings of Satan. Amen. We're looking down on it. Amen. Realizing that we are now enthroned with Jesus Christ. We are part, amen, of his powerful, powerful kingdom. Amen. And it's so very important uh, that we realize it. We are part of his kingdom. Well, Reverend, I haven't made it to heaven yet. Amen. No, we, no, we haven't. But we are part of his earthly kingdom that he has down here. Amen. And you and I are certainly to be mindful of that. Now, here we go, Sister Black mm -hmm. and Beulah and friends into these juicy, juicy questions. Amen. What everyone needs to know to deal with the enemy, God has given us in his book sufficient knowledge regarding the devil to help us, mm -hmm. both as to our attitude toward the enemy and as to the weapons that we are to use in conflict with him. But biblical students, as a rule, are indifferent to the subject. It is not popular nor agreeable. Yet, God holds us responsible for this ignorance mm. of what he has revealed mm. to us regarding Satan. Mm. Satan thrives on this ignorance. My goodness. The light of truth is his undoing. Expose the foe by the light of truth. Challenge him by the victory of the cross. And he is defeated. He is a broken power. And it is so beneficial to us to know that Satan is not some invincible force that cannot be uh, defeated. Satan is already a defeated foe, but you and I must understand what is necessary in order for us to be victorious over the assaults and the attacks of the enemy. And we've already established as early on in this study that Satan can work in a variety of forms and fashions, and one of them is through people. people. Through people. One of them is through people. And during the course of our earthly journey, we will all have some encounters. Amen. And we don't have to think long or hard to recall some encounters that we've had with some very treacherous, wicked, mean hearted people. Amen. Amen. In fact, some of amen. us, amen, had some dealings with some just today. Amen. And so it's something that is very common, but realize that regardless to what form or fashion the enemy may assault or come upon us in effort to attack us, remember that Satan is not invincible. Satan can be defeated. We can overcome the enemy. Amen. We can overcome him. And in fact, he is already defeated. Amen. By the power of Jesus Christ, by the power of our Heavenly Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Satan is already defeated. He knows uh, that the end of his journey will be in that of a burning hell. He knows that he, in the final end of things, Satan will be cast for all eternity into hell. Mm -hmm. And those who have lined up with him in that treachery and that treacherous deeds, having failed to repent and receive God's forgiveness, they will end up in hell too. And it's unfortunate 
Amen. And I know there are people who debate the existence of hell, but there is a hell. The Bible that tells us about the reality of Jesus, the reality of God, his Father, amen, also tells us about the reality or the realness of the devil. Please don't underestimate. Please don't think he's a fictitious character. Realize that he's real. All right. Now let's get to these questions. One of the questions is, can Satan or evil spirits read our thoughts? Can Satan or evil spirits read our thoughts? Can the devil and other evil spirits that are under uh, the rule of Satan, are they able to read our thoughts? Let's see. This question comes up frequently. The answer is no. Oh, Satan is not able to read our thoughts. Amen. 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 No. But he is able to enter our minds and introduce certain thoughts. Amen. But he is not able otherwise to read our minds. Amen. And uh, he does not have that power or that ability. Only God has that ability. That's right, Pastor. That That's right. Ability. That's right. But That's right. we must realize that the chief battlefield with the devil first takes place in the mind. In the mind. Now, right now, yep. In the mind. Yep, yep. Therefore, Scripture tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. But can he read our minds? No, the answer is no. Amen. If a Christian is free from internal uh, demonization, the enemy cannot read his or her thoughts from the inside out. Minds set on what the spirit desires, amen, are a sanctuary impenetrable by unholy spirits. By reading facial expressions, voice intonations, and behavioral nuances, they can often predict what we're going to do. But this does not mean they have access to our innermost thoughts. Mm -hmm. However, within the a demonized believer, spirits have more ready access to thoughts. Evil beings may indeed project thoughts into the mind, moves into the emotions and impulses, into the will from their external vantage point. This is the stuff of which most spiritual warfare is made, but the battle must be characterized primarily as from the outside in rather than the inside out. And of course here, it's imperative that we are aware of the fact. But let's go and see what the scripture says mm -hmm. in Romans chapter 8, verse 5. In Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Romans is that book that comes right behind the book of Acts. Amen. And Romans chapter 8, verse 5 has something very, very special uh, to tell us. All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. And it reads, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Let's see what uh, verse 6 says. For to be carnally minded is death. Mm-hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life, life and, peace. and peace. That's good, Pastor. Amen. That's good. And of course, it is so very, 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 very important, essential, in fact, that we realize, amen, that we want to strive to have a spiritual mind, to be spiritually minded. Amen. 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 And of course, those who are spiritually minded 
are less likely to fall victim to the devil. Amen. That's not saying that we won't at times have our occasions where we will slip and fall. Amen. But the beautiful thing is, amen, those of us who are spiritually minded, amen, are far less likely to fall victim to the traps that the devil has set, to the temptations that he has put forth. Amen. Now, one of the things that was exposed here is that while the devil cannot read our minds, Lady Black and Beulah and friends, uh, he is able to read our facial expressions, <laughs> our voice intonations, mm -hmm. and behavioral nuances. Uh -huh. Amen. By which the devil and his demons can often predict what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can immediately <laughs> make it known. Amen. What their actions are going to be, what their words are going to be, just by their facial expressions. Looking at them in the face. Amen. Some of them can almost speak with these nasty facial expressions even before they open their mouths. Amen. And of course here it's imperative that we recognize that. Amen. What kind of facial expression do I possess? But now, Bear in mind, there are some people who can put, uh, put forth this very pleasant facial expression, full That's of smiles. Right. That's right. Come and on, still, Pastor. amen, right. mean us nothing no but harm. harm. Amen. And so we don't want to get confused mm -hmm. on that. It. Yeah, don't get because, it twisted. Uh, don't. Let me see here. While I was looking for the gospel station. Don't get that Amen. twisted now. There That's was a right. song that said, smiling faces sometimes <laughs> pretend to, to be, be your, your friend. friend. Mm -hmm. Smiling faces, smiling faces can tell lies. Tell lies. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 It. I won't go any further with the song. Amen. Or else you'll know that I never made it to the gospel station. <laughs> Amen. All right. So some people can be full of smiles, yet, amen, have hearts that are full of treachery toward us. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. And can be very hypocritical with smiling faces. Amen. And so forth. But many times, uh, Satan can look at our facial expressions. He can look at also uh, uh, the tone of voice that we project. He can look at our behavior, and he can see in advance. He can make calls and judgments about what our next move is going to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it's so important uh, that we recognize that fact. Amen. But the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 says something that is very, very, very powerful. And it, it blesses me each and every time I read it. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Amen. Meaning, uh, they that are after the flesh, amen. We are concerned uh, primarily about the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, amen. The things of the spirit, amen. All right. Now. Here again, we are encouraging your questions. Amen. Can Satan or evil spirits read your thoughts? The answer is no. Amen. But they can prove to be instrumental in planting seeds of thought in our minds in hopes that we will act on it. Amen. Amen. Putting something in front of us uh, that they hope we will Amen. Lunge at. Mm -hmm. Dangling a bait. And mm -hmm. I'm a fisherman. And I know what fish, amen, tend to bite certain baits. If I'm going for brim, I, I know they tend to be very partial to crickets and red worms. If I'm going for crappy, I know they tend to be partial uh, to minnows and other jigs uh, that have various colors. Uh, 
but uh, bass, they tend to go for certain bait. Satan knows what baits to dangle before us. He knows what baits we are most likely uh, to bite. Amen. Amen. And so he will plant certain seeds of temptation before us. And we have to first grapple and struggle with those temptations first right up here in our minds before we act on those temptations. Amen. Whether they be uh, actions that will glorify God or actions that will glorify the devil. But we're going to do one of the two. Amen. All right. Let's move now, amen, to another very commonly asked question. And that is, how can I tell the difference between the voice of the Holy Spirit and evil spirits? How can I tell the difference between the voice of the Holy Spirit and uh, evil spirits? Amen. Amen. And of course, the Holy Spirit has a special voice, and then evil spirits have a special voice. The thing for you and I is being able to distinguish between the voice of the Holy Spirit and the voice of evil spirits. Amen. Between that of the voice of God and between that of the voice of the devil. Amen. How? And that's the question. How can we tell the difference? Let's see. God will never speak anything that is contrary to his revealed word or character. Mm -hmm. And that is mm -hmm. a point that we need to absorb. Mm -hmm. Amen. And keep in our minds. When we hear a voice... Amen. One of the things that will enable us to determine whether that is the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, or the voice of an evil spirit is this. Is, is what that voice suggesting, is it in alignment with the word of God? Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Does it fall in accordance with the word of God? If it goes outside of the realm or the scope of God's word, that's not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Come on, Pastor. That is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God is not going to tell you and me to do anything that's going to be contradictory to what is written in his word. That is going to go against what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so whenever those contrary voices come, one of the ways we can quickly determine which voice that is, whether it's the voice of the Holy Spirit or whether it's the voice of a satanic spirit, is how, what that voice is telling us lines up with the word of God. Amen. Amen. All right. But let's move on. It says, the Holy Spirit is gentle, clear and consistent in his leading. He leads by an inward prompting that has a ring of righteousness to it. Often other persons or circumstances will confirm That's right. his voice. That's right. That's right. If we are truly submitted to him, we will be open to the scrutiny and correction of others. The voice of God will always result in redemptive purpose. And of course, fruit will flow from the promptings of the Father, God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. And of course here, it's so very, very important uh, that we realize the fact, amen, uh, that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, amen, he speaks to us in such clear fashion. Sometimes he comes, amen, and he condemns us for the wrong that we've done. Sometimes he condemns us, he convicts us 
for the wrong move that we made, the wrong actions that we took. So the Holy Spirit will, amen, uh, convict us, amen, of our wrong. Yes. The Holy Spirit will speak clearly so that we will know, amen. Now, the voice of the enemy will always speak words of encouragement to us, prompting us to do wrong. Amen. Now, I know I'm not alone. Amen. At this table or in the pews or those who are viewing. Amen. That you've had these voices prompting you, urging you, pushing you to do that which was outside of God's will. Yes, indeed. It's a battle. It's an internal battle. It's a warfare that we have, amen, between, amen, uh, the flesh and the spirit, between uh, the Holy Spirit and the satanic spirits, amen, that are in league with the arch enemy, Satan himself, amen. And so it's so important that we realize that. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit confirms God's word. The Holy Spirit causes us to, to feel something deep down inside. Amen. Further confirming, amen, the path that we should take. Amen. And warning us of the wrong paths that we should not take. Amen. Amen. Now, there are times when we have the tendency at times to want something so badly, to desire something so badly, until we will ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit. We will ignore the voice of the Almighty God. Amen. In a quest, amen, to gain that which uh, uh, we are so greatly uh, desiring and that we want so much until we will push the voice of the Holy Spirit. We will just close out our minds uh, to that because here's what we want. But it always ends when we make that mistake. It always ends, amen, greatly to our disappointment. It ends greatly to our hardship. It causes us to, to say, God tried to tell me not to go that way, but I failed to listen. Amen. All right. Amen. It is something uh, that uh, I want us to take note of. Let's go to Exodus in your Bibles, uh, chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. The second book of the Bible, Exodus, and we're going to look at chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. And there in, it reads, and God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Now the children of Israel here at this point, to give some background, they were enslaved in the land of Egypt. They were in bondage, in captivity in the land of Egypt. And of course, they had migrated to Egypt uh, to avoid famine that had struck their land. And that's how they ended up in the land of Egypt. But they, so many of them uh, had 
uh, uh, populated uh, and grown in population until uh, Pharaoh put them into bondage. And of course, scripture tells us that it was there that the children of Israel cried out to God for God's help. And God heard their cry, as we are told in verse 24 of Exodus chapter 2. And he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And verse 25 tells us, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. All right. God heard to Make it short, God heard the voices of his people down in the land of Egypt. He heard their cries. And God will hear your and my cries. Amen. And God honored uh, their cries for help because we know God sent Moses back to the land of Egypt. And Moses was able to lead the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, amen, with the help and the divine assistance of the Almighty God. They got out of Egypt. They got out of Egypt because God heard their cry and God brought them out. He used Moses to be that human leader and provide that human leadership, but ultimately God brought them out. He led them by day with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire. And all they had to do was follow the cloud by day and the fire by night. And the guidance that God gave to Moses, they came out of Egypt. You may be in an Egypt, an Egypt of circumstances that are difficult and harsh Crisis situations that you're dealing with can be your Egypt. Amen. But I preached a sermon sometime back, some years ago, Sister Black, mm -hmm. entitled, Egypt is not, not my final location. 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 That's right. Egypt is not my final destination. Amen. You don't have to stay in Egypt. Cry out to the Lord. He will hear your cry if you call him sincerely. Amen. And whenever we cry out to him, amen, cry out to him with sincereness. Amen. He heard that cry. Amen. And he hears yours and mine. Amen. And he brought them out of Egypt. Amen. He remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And of course, I want us to go now uh, to... Uh, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 8 quickly. Which is one chapter over from where we uh, were. And it reads, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, a bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 reads, and he said, draw not nigh hither, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Verse 6 reads, Moreover, he said, 
I am the God of thy father, the God and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. And of course, uh, when we look at verse 8, it says, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites mm. and the Jebusites. Amen. Mm. And of course here God shares with Moses from a burning bush and this was one of the miraculous things that God had done. While Moses was attending to his father-in-law Jethro's sheep, amen, he comes to the backside of the desert, and he sees this bush burning. But the mystery was, and the mystique of, it was that the bush was burning, flaming, blazing, but not burning up, not being consumed by the fire. And Moses, this was a tremendous question and mystery to Moses, and Moses uh, went over to examine why the bush was burning but not being consumed by the fire. Fire normally consumes whatever it burns, amen. Uh, but it was not consuming this bush, and Moses goes over to examine, and when he gets to a certain point, God speaks to him out of the bush, and God tells him, uh, Moses, Take off thy shoes, for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. And he makes his plan known to Moses, that he would have Moses to go back to the land of Egypt and to lead the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage, hardship, out of the land of affliction that had been imposed and certainly poured out upon them by the Egyptians. Amen. They were delivered. Now, one of the things uh, that uh, blessed me greatly uh, was the fact uh, that God brings them now into a land. And this land was already occupied by people. It was occupied by the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Why would God bring the children of Israel into a land that was already occupied and make it their land and give those other folks land to the children of Israel? It is strongly, evidently believed that God had grown quite weary with the actions of the people who already dwell there. Mm -hmm. Their sinful activity, the fact that they had no uh, care for God, they did not worship or serve the true and living God. And thus God took the land from them and gave it to the children of Israel. Amen. And that's how, amen, they ended up in this place called Canaan, in this place uh, that as called in common uh, terms, the Holy Land, because God gave it to them. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. When we fail to honor God, God will take some things from us. Amen. 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 He will take some things away. Amen. And give them uh, to others. Amen. Who will know how to appreciate. Yes. 
Amen. Who will know how to behave with it. Amen. Who will know how to have blessings. Amen. And know how to act with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You and I sometimes have closets now filled with more stuff than we can put on. We live in houses better in many instances than we uh, uh, thought we would ever have. Amen. But are we remembering to truly honor God? That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's so important that we honor God. Or else he will take from us and give it to somebody else. Amen. And so it's so important. Now, the children of Israel, they got over that. And eventually, they started falling short. And they ended up in captivity by the Babylonians. Amen. So be careful. Amen. Because God is watching. Yes. Amen. Pastor, before you move to Luke, um, can we back up just a second? Yes. We had mm -hmm. a question come in, and it was dealing with back when you were talking about the Holy Spirit and evil spirits, and it says often other persons or circumstances will confirm his voice if we are truly submitted to him. The question is, what about prophecies? Is it truly the God talking through a prophet about your life? Will God reveal that same prophecy to you as well if it's truly coming from God? Well, if it is truly coming from God, uh, I look at the prophecy uh, that uh, was given uh, to uh, David. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. Scripture tells us God spoke to his prophet Nathan. Amen. And he's told Nathan, uh, to go to David. David had already laid with Bathsheba, mm -hmm. got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. Bathsheba was already a married woman. Mm -hmm. And of course, scripture tells us uh, uh, her husband uh, was on the battlefield. He was a soldier. And of course, uh, David, when he found out that Bathsheba was pregnant, uh, he gets uh, her husband, Uriah, put on the front line of battle and gets him killed. Amen. David thought he was home free. <laughs> he said, now, uh, he went right on after Uriah's death and married Bathsheba. And so he, would, he felt like nobody would be the wiser when she, her pregnancy uh, begins to show. Amen. And they would just think it's David's baby. Well, it was David's baby. <laughs> but how he got him was all the wrong way. And scripture tells us David thought he was home free until God sent the prophet to his house. Mm -hmm. And the prophet gave this story of a man that had an abundance of sheep and another man who just had one sheep. And the man who had the abundance of sheep got the man who had the one sheep killed so he could take that one. Mm. And David jumped up and said, who is he? Who is he? I'll take care of him right away. And Nathan pointed that prophetic finger in David's face and said, thou art the man. And so, uh, it can be confirmed to us uh, in response to this question mm -hmm. by prophecy. Yes. And then the Holy Spirit will confirm it also. That's right. Amen. Uh, by virtue of what the Holy Spirit will say. That's right. That's and the right. Holy Spirit will let us know. Yeah. yeah. That's right, Pastor. Yes, indeed. There that's, have been that's times. Good. That's good. There have been times some of the old saints have have come and <laughs> shared things with me. And of course, I at first didn't want to pay it any attention, <laughs> but that special voice of the Holy Spirit said, listen, said this person is speaking and what they're sharing with you is of me and I'm using them 
to get this message to you. Amen. I'm glad that I listened to a lot of the old saints and the old warriors. Amen. Amen. They told me things that would help me bypass so many pitfalls mm -hmm. that I would have ended up in. Amen. And every time I would come home from college on breaks, at holiday breaks and so forth, my grandmother, amen, Mama Pearl, would call me and say, come here. And she'd be looking at me like she could look right through me. Amen. Like she was Superman that he, and, uh, and she would look at me and she said, you, you yet holding on? You over there in Little Rock College? But are you yet holding on? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, don't look down. Mm -hmm. Look at me in the face. Look me in the face. And if I was saying something that grandma and some of the old warriors weren't buying, I could tell. They would do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I knew then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew then. <laughs> yeah. No. They knew I was lying. Amen. Amen. But I appreciate the fact that there were people that God put in my path to share words of truth and insight with me that kept me, amen, from falling into some pitfalls, amen, amen, because I gave heed to what they said. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying, amen, that I heeded everything, <laughs> amen, because, amen, I can't lay claim to perfection, amen, and Jesus Christ himself declared there are none perfect but God the Father which is in heaven, amen, amen. Ain't none of us perfect, amen. Y'all know y'all made some mistakes. Y'all know y'all made some, amen. There were some pitfalls, unfortunately, we, fall, we fell into, amen, amen. But the thing is, you learn from your mistakes. That's right. So that you don't keep repeating them over and over and over and over again. Amen. Hopefully this addressed the person. I'm, I'm sure it did. And Pastor, before we move on, mm -hmm. you talked, we talked about the prophecy. We talked about the prophet. We talked yes. about confirmation. Now the question is, will God reveal things to you in a dream? Yes. Yes, he can. Let me tell you how. That is true. There's a man hmm. who had been known uh, for trickery, years of trickery and wrongdoing. His name was Jacob. He robbed his brother Esau of the birthright. He put on stuff to pretend like him, that he was Esau. Esau was the oldest of these brothers, and to pretend that he was Esau. But he went on, and there was this line of trickery and of wrongdoing on the part of Jacob. But Jacob wanted to come back home after years. And Scripture tells us, out there in the wilderness, Jacob had a dream. Hallelujah. As wrong as he had been, mm -hmm. God came to him in a dream. And in this dream, Jacob saw angels ascending and descending on this ladder from heaven, going up and some coming down. And scripture tells us Jacob wrestled with one of the angels until close to the break of day. Amen. God will reveal things to you in the dreams. Amen. If, and so dreams can be one of the avenues that God will use. But here again, here again. try that dream and see if that dream, amen, balances out with the word of God. That's right. Always have to balance Always. out. Always have to balance Amen. out. Amen. 
See if that dream balances out with the word of God. See if it falls in accord with the word of God. Amen. Are you dreaming something that's outside of the will of the scope of God? Amen. Now, uh, but that thing, certainly God can speak to us in a dream. And, and God has him going home, going home. He said, but, 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 but Esau is angry, and he's probably going to kill me out of what I did. And uh, God tells him, go on home. Well, before he got home, Esau came and met him and showed him forgiveness. Out of all, and you know the thing that blesses me, out of all of the mess ups and the crooked activity that Jacob had engaged in, and we only made mention of one, but there were others. Amen. Jacob gets right with God. He gets right with his brother Esau. And now look what scripture says. Scripture says, the father and the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, mm -hmm. and, the God. and it doesn't say of Esau, uh -huh. Amen. of Jacob, meaning you can be the worst crook in the world and get right with God. That's right. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. And receive. Amen. Amen. The embrace of God. Amen. And now look, the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Amen. 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 So if there's any persons out there who have questions about, will God really accept me out of all of the mistakes that I have made, the errors that I have uh, made, will God accept me out of all the wrong that I've done? Uh, Pastor Black, I have a track record that ain't good at all. And will God accept me? Listen, he accepted Jacob and he will certainly accept you. But here's the thing, amen. After David's mistakes, David too repented for his wrongdoing, amen. And he came to God and said, cast me not away from thy presence. Take not away thy, thy Holy Spirit from me. He said, and of course God forgave him. David repented and God forgave him. And David is heralded as one of the greatest kings mm -hmm. of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, Israel, rather. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Amen. All right. We've gotten a little ways, but we got a lot more ground to cover, but we can't cover it all tonight. But we're going to get more and more of this covered, and I hope and pray that you will be with us and that you have been blessed by this evening's study. Amen. 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 And so, Sister Black, I'm going to yield to you. Yes, Pastor, we can't get through it all. All good things, as you say, must come to an end. But we will reconvene next, next Wednesday on the 10th of April. Amen. And we will get to it on that day. And just, it, it, hope all your questions, uh, all your concerns will keep until next Wednesday, and we will convene Please. at the same Amen. time next Please week. Please do it. But we want to thank everyone for joining us for bi uh, baptism last week and coming back this, this Wednesday for our Bible study. Amen. And I'm going to make it real brief because I know that uh, we need to uh, get home and we thank God for last night that all of Metro Atlanta, we, we, we were safe through the storms and we talked to people today and people had uh, damage to their homes and to trees in their yards and yes. water in their home, but they made it. And Some we thank of whom God. were members of Beulah. Uh, members of Beulah, Amen. but, they, but they, they're still here. Amen. So we're thankful for that this morning. So if you could remain on until Pastor gives the benediction, and then I'm going to be very, very, very quick. And as I said, we're thankful to God that as the storms came through and uh, mostly uh, Metro Atlanta that are on, Decatur and Tifton and Stonecrest and Fayetteville, McDonough, Stone Mountain and Byron and Jonesboro, Georgia, yes, Riverdale, yes, yes. Douglasville, Rail, Locust Grove, East Point, Lithonia, yes. Temple, Duluth, Athens, Macon, Carrollton, Buford, Hogansville, Smyrna, and Damascus, Georgia. And we're just so thankful to God that everyone was safe. Amen. And, and on the West Coast, Stockton, California, 
Pastor Oakland, California. Amen. And we have a newcomer of California City, California. Amen. Uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Denver, Colorado. Amen. And I know that they are yes. three hours behind us, so it's 5 o'clock on, on the West Coast, and we thank you all for being on. Amen. And then as we go to the Middle, uh, middle, middle East, the uh, middle, mid, mid, mid east of the, of the country, uh, we have Milwaukee and Chicago yes. and Ypsilanti, Michigan and Detroit. Yes. Lorraine, Ohio, Youngstown, Columbus, and Dayton, amen, Ohio. Amen, amen. And as we move to the East Coast, we have Albany, Queens, and New, New York, and also New Jersey that's on. Amen. Uh, Rocky Mount, Virginia. We have a new one on uh, Milford, Virginia that's on. Amen. Hillcrest Heights, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, Anderson, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina, Belmont, Fayetteville, Clayton, Durham, Winston-Salem, yes, yes. Asheville, North Carolina. Amen. Phoenix City, Selma, Mobile, and Birmingham, Alabama. Yes. And in Louisiana, we have Pineville, Baton Rouge, yes. and New Orleans. Amen. Hazelhurst, Picayune, Calhoun City, yes. Harrisburg, Columbus, Greenville, and Macomb, my. Mississippi. Amen. And Memphis and Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes. Uh, Little Rock, North Little Rock. Yes. Pine Bluff, Blytheville, and Sherwood, Arkansas. Amen. Claremont, Winter Springs, and Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. And San Antonio, Brazoria, and Dallas, Texas. Amen. And we also have some members on from Mount Ephraim that's joining us tonight. That Amen. To for our Bible study. And we Praise the Lord. Because people have God a choice you, Mount of, of who they could choose to join for Bible study. And we're just very thankful and we're blessed, Beulah that so many have chosen to be with us tonight. Amen. And we just thank you all. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, Pastor. Thank you so much, Lady Black. And we just praise and thank God for all of those who have joined us on this evening. Amen. Our members and friends here in the sanctuary in person. Amen. We praise Amen. and thank God for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes Amen. Yes. And those, amen, who are joining us, as this Bible study has gone out, streamed, amen, uh, virtually to your various areas, we appreciate you. And always, we thank God for you making time out of your Wednesday evening to join us in study. Amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to get ready now to go to the Lord in this word of closing prayer. Our prayer is that God will keep each of you and that he will keep you in perfect peace, amen, because your minds will be stayed on him, amen. Father God, we come now to you in that name that is superior to all other names, thank in you, the Father. precious name of Jesus. Name of Father, Jesus. we want to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, dear Father. You are such a good God. Yes, you are. Yes, you Dear are. Dear Father, you are beyond compare. And we thank you for being that loving, caring God that you are. Thank you, dear Father, for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father, for the blessings of salvation. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many other blessings that you have poured out upon us. Dear Father, to have shelter is such a blessing. Yes. When we pass and see the tents and the other makeshift dwellings, dear Father, some in pasteboard boxes, dear Father, because they have nowhere else to stay. Thank you, dear Father, for the blessings of shelter. Yes, Lord. For food. Thank you, for, dear Father, for decent clothes. And yes. Thank you, dear Father, for being closed in our right minds and waking us up to see another day. And Father, we thank you for everything that you've done, dear Father, to express your grace and your mercy toward us. Now, look upon your people everywhere, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know exactly what each and every individual stands in need of. And you have the power to supply those needs. Somebody needs you for healing, healing from sickness. 
And dear Father, you have that special healing touch that even the greatest medical doctors don't have. Touch sick bodies everywhere. Yes, Lord. Bring healing, dear Father. Bring recovery. Yes. Somebody needs a financial breakthrough, yes, dear Lord. Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They don't know how they're going to make ends yes, meet. Father. But Touch dear right Father, now, Father, you are able. Touch right now. Dear Father, to bring that financial blessing, to help them, dear Father. We pray, dear Father, somebody needs your help right now because they're struggling, dear Father, with a spirit of depression a spirit of despair and despondency. And dear Father, they need you right now to encourage their mind, mm -hmm. to get into their minds, dear Father, and bring that positive outlook that they stand in need of, dear Father. We pray right now, we lift up your people. Yes, Lord. Dear Father, who are struggling with various issues and various concerns, yes, far Lord. too numerous to mention in this prayer, but you know, you know, all about it. You know, you know what they are going through. You know, you know what they need, and you have that power. Yes, you do. To supply. Yes, you do. All, 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 all of their needs. Yes, Lord. According to your riches in glory. Yes, Lord. By Christ Jesus, Father, move by your move, power. Move, Father, move. Move. Keep your covering over them. Keep your hedge of protection around them. Dear Father, help them, dear Father, to be victorious over the enemy. Yes, Lord. To have victory over yes, the Lord. enemy. Yes, Lord. Victory. Dear victory. Father, to know that they don't have to fall victim to the enemy. They can be victorious. And Father, we pray right now that you will keep us and keep us all in your care. And dear Father, we pray that you in the midst of blessing and pouring out your blessings will throw in some unexpected blessings. Throw in some blessings that we didn't even ask you yes, for. Yes, blessings that yes. we weren't even anticipating. Yes, throw in some yes. blessings there, Father. Dear Father, blow our minds, if yes, you will. Yes, Father. Yes. Letting us know that you are still on the throne. Yes, Lord. We pray and ask it all in Jesus' all name. All in Jesus' name. And we name. say thank in you, Jesus Heavenly name. Father. Thank glory, you, Father. glory, thank glory you, to God. your name. Yes, Lord, thank and you. And we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen.